Hi everyone. Um, we're getting there. Some tiny step towards our new normal. Hats off to the first bunch of people that went back today. The first um, students and teachers that went back. Um, the rest of us are so looking forward to learning from your experiences um, in this new world that we found ourselves in. So I have spoken a lot in my previous Snapchats about talking about emotions and talking about feelings um, surrounding COVID-19 and um, just keeping that, that channel of communication open with your children, helping them attach a feeling or naming a feeling connected to that, just so that they can have a good understanding of what they're experiencing at the moment. And about a week ago, I read a piece that was written by one of the prep staff members. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go and read it, do yourself a favor um, and go and have a look. It was written by Mrs. Caroline Correa. Um, she just did a bit of a comparison between emotional intelligence and your intelligence, your IQ. Um, and it was beautifully summed up. There was a beautiful comparison between the two. Um, and she just spoke a little bit about how the two work together and how important they are, and um, both of them. How important it is to, for a child to, to be both emotional intelligence and intelligence to be able to fl flourish and succeed in society. Um, so do yourself a favor and go and have a look at that um, article that she wrote. Um, as mentioned in her article, she said um, how your intelligence is measured by standardized assessments, while your emotional intelligence is something deeper than that. Um, however, these two things work hand in hand. And I wanted to just give, I wanted to kind of add on from what she had said in her article um, and just explain a little bit further and a little bit more and possibly give you a few tips on what you could maybe do to develop your, your child's emotional intelligence. So if a child can think positively and constructively, they are able to overcome very intense emotions and they feel more positive and energetic. And that's the emotional intelligence side of things. Um, a kind of child who is like this is more open to learning. They're more equipped to effectively develop. Um, so we need to remember that learning and memory is significantly affected by intense emotions. So if I could use this example, if you wake up in the morning and there's just a lot of chaos <laughs> and conflict, um, screaming and shouting and, and obviously ending up in, in fights between spouses or between um, mom and children or dad and children, um, we all know that we go to our workplaces and we go to school and we think continuously about what happened that morning. Um, and so it's very easy for us to see how these intense emotions and intense situations that we experience can definitely impact how we function as human beings um, in our workplace and at school. Um, so we need to definitely remember that emotions provide food for learning. Um, after reading Caroline's piece, I just felt that perhaps a Snapchat was needed for some parents just to guide us in terms of how we can develop our child's EQ. So basically, we're looking to develop a child's ability to identify and control and understand their own thoughts and feelings, um, communicate them appropriately to others, and have empathy with others. So it involves an interaction on an emotional level. And how can we teach that in our children? Well, firstly, we must understand that the first place where children learn about emotions is at home. Um, through interaction with our primary caregivers. So our guardians, our moms, our dads, our grandparents, our nannies, um, any interaction that we are exposed to are where we learn our primary um, reactions to emotions from. So it's largely based in how we as parents or grandparents or um, nannies react to our children's intense emotions and also in how we react to intense situations and our feelings of intense emotions. Um, your children are always watching, so you are definitely a model for what is appropriate and what is acceptable behavior. And just keep that in the back of your mind because whenever there is an intense situation, because your children are watching. Um, 
often what we do as parents is we try to hide conflict from our children. Um, we think that, oh, they're too little to see this. or And a lot of the time, I think if it is, you know, beyond what is a, a healthy conversation between a husband and wife, um, if we could weigh up what is a healthy um, kind of discussion that happens, um, I think it is actually very important for your children to see that. Um, to see that mom and dad can have a disagreement and they still love each other afterwards that mom and dad can have a difference of opinion. And it's okay to have a difference of opinion. Um, that we can agree, uh, disagree on something, but we can still get on with each other. And um, we can apologize. There's so much value in a child seeing that a conflict is not the end of the world. Um, and that life goes on afterwards and people still like each other afterwards. There's so much value in a child learning from seeing you do that at home. So try not to hide every single conflict that happens at home away from your children because they're definitely learning in those moments from you. Um, sometimes we do make mistakes. As parents, we make mistakes. We might slam a door. We might scream a little bit too loud. Um, we do make mistakes, and sometimes our children witness that. I think we need to remember that there is always an opportunity for learning, and there's always a chance for us to go back to our children and say, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done that. It was actually wrong. Mommy will learn from this. And I don't think I'm going to try not to do it again. Um, so I think that's important. That there's always a learning opportunity. And we should apologize um, and show our children a better way of dealing with something, with, with a situation. Um, just a few more tips that you could possibly use. Encourage talking about feelings. I've said this over and over again. Like with COVID-19, help your children. It's actually the perfect opportunity. These stressful situations are a perfect learning opportunity for your children. So speak, talk about it, validate their feelings, help them name their feelings. And I'm not just talking about young children. I'm talking about older children as well. They need to know that there's a name for this and I'm not alone and that, that this is actually okay. It's okay to feel this way. Um, set limits. Not all behaviors are acceptable. Throwing yourself on the floor in front of other people or even when you're not in front of other people is actually an unacceptable behavior. It's um, an inappropriate behavior um, to an intense emotion. And I think that children need to know that there's a limit. Um, so even though we try and validate and, and name feelings for our children, not all behaviors are acceptable. Um, read. Read books to your children. Every single story I have ever read to my children has some element of excitement or disappointment or frustration um, or sadness. And books are a beautiful opportunity to teach your children more about that, to speak about how would you feel if that happened. Um, or this boy looks sad. Why do you think he's so sad? Um, and that's teaching your children about emotions. So read. Read books um, and speak. Stop and speak about what is going on in the book. Ask for forgiveness. So when you make those mistakes, say sorry and ask for forgiveness. And grant forgiveness when your children make mistakes as well. Share your own personal experiences. Um, it's really okay for you to come home and say, I really had a bad day at work today. I had a fight with someone at work. Or um, I had to deal with a difficult situation at work today. Um, your children need to hear that you are also going through this. It's completely normal. And they learn from what you have experienced as well. Be aware and in control of your own feelings and emotions and how you react to them. Try far, as far as possible to be a positive role model for your children. Um, accept your children and let them make mistakes and learn from the, the consequences that they have to um, experience. And be patient with them because they're going to make mistakes. They're going to throw themselves on the floor in the shopping center until they learn differently. Um, encourage your child to take risks. It would be Great if we all just took a couple of risks in life. So encourage your child encourage your child to do that. And then just lastly, allow your child to enjoy life without any pressures. Um, I think it's so important that we do enjoy little things where we don't have to feel the pressure to perform or the pressure to be better than someone else. Um, so allow them that time to be able to just be. Um, and just remember that 
you need to be emotional intelligent, emotionally intelligent to be able to teach emotional intelligence to children. So I think it starts with you and you need to work on yourself before we start working on our children. I hope everybody has a good week. Bye.